I want us to turn to Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 6. And we're going to talk about a faithful man this morning. And, and the scripture simply says in Proverbs 20 and 6, Many a man proclaims his own steadfast love, but a faithful man who can find. Many a man proclaims his own steadfast love, but a faithful man who can find. You won't be a good father until you're a faithful man. You will not be a good father until you are a faithful man. Thank God that we do have faithful men here, but we could always use some more. Amen? I thank God for the faithful men God has given to Covenant Church. And the, this verse that we just read asks a very sobering question. Who can find a faithful man? Well, it's time for a checkup today. And we can't use the things that that we gave out a few moments ago and we can't use this stuff that we're going to use here in a little while. This uh, st stay bill, it, it won't do anything for a faithful man. WD-40 won't do anything to, to do a checkup on a faithful man. Uh, these shop towels, these zip ties, this car care kit, we could go on and on and on with the stuff up here, but this won't do us any good good when it comes to doing a tune-up or when it does, comes to doing a checkup of who we are. The only thing that will do that is the Word of God. The Word of God. This is where we, we, we can open it up and do a checkup. We can see who we really are, what we're really made of, and the priority list, whether it needs to be flip-flopped or moved around just a little bit. If ever there was a day when our world needed a faithful man, today is the day. Not men with influential big positions, not men with big bank accounts, not men with big muscles, not men with a, a, big, a good work ethic. There is nothing wrong with any of those things unless they are a goal. And if you're not careful, a goal will become a God. See, the Bible declares that faithfulness is the basic fundamental ingredient of, of our character. You will not know God's blessing apart from faithfulness. What our nation needs are men who are faithful. Why should we be faithful? Well, I want to share a few reasons with you today. We need to be faithful because Jesus Christ is faithful to us. Which of us has not sinned? Well, not anyone can hold your hand when I ask that question, because we were born into sin. Well, thank God for 1 John 1 and 9. It simply says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And He's never failed to do it when a man cries out in desperation of a need for God to touch and minister. See, He's been faithful in temptation. Are you tempted? We asked that question at the table in the prayer room here just a couple of weeks ago. Are, guys, are, are you dealing with temptation? Guys, are you, are you tempted? And everybody, everybody agreed that, yeah, that was a problem. Well, I want to thank God for 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13 because that scripture says, There hath no temptation taken you but such as common to man but God is faithful come on say it with me but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it come on let's give our God a hand clap of praise in this house he deserves the glory he's faithful to keep us from falling we don't stay saved by holding on to God. We've kept, we're kept because he holds on to us. As we lift a hand, he will grab it. No doubt when Peter was walking on the Sea of Galilee and when he began to seek, there is no doubt in my mind that, that Peter reached out to Jesus and Jesus grabbed his hand. He reached, Jesus got him and lifted him up and saved him. And he'll do the same today. 
In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. Well, the first thing we want to talk about, we need men who are faithful to the family. Faithful to the family. Faithful to your companion. Men, your wife's happiness and emotional security in this life rest almost entirely upon you. What an amen in the house. As Kathy would say, (laughs) are you a man or a mouse? Well, then squeak up. It's, it's my deep, settled conviction after 37 years of marriage that 100% of the responsibility for the maintenance of the marriage relationship belongs to me, to the husband. The Scripture tells us that as husbands we need to pattern ourselves after Jesus Christ who gave himself for the church. God built the wife to be a responder. And when she's loved in the same way Christ loves the church, she will be fulfilled and secure and satisfied and happy. A man was talking to his wife after she had done something that he didn't approve of. He said to her, how can you be so beautiful and so stupid at the same time? Her reply was this, God made me beautiful so you would love me, and God made me stupid so I'd love you. (laughs) Easy on those fellas' ribs out there, girls. Remain faithful. To your wife. Adultery is the ultimate act of unfaithfulness. But you don't have to commit the physical act of adultery to be unfaithful. Some have love affairs with their work. Some have love affairs with their sports. Some have love affairs with other things. A husband is to be to his wife like a wall is to a vine. The husband is to be his wife, is to be her support, her strength, something solid and something that she can cling to. We need to be faithful to our children. The heart of every little boy lies within a father's hand. Every broken promise and abusive word tears a hole that may not be mended. I'm telling you, your children need you desperately. I challenge you to read the Bible, particularly the Old Testament, and notice how many times it's the reference that children follow the same path that is taken by their fathers, whether it be for good or whether it be for evil. The worst thing a man can do is to walk out on his family. It's the most flagrant of all crimes a man can commit. Don't be an absentee father. You might be one, but if you are, come on, get back in the game. Get back in the game. Get back involved with your children's life. If you come home late every night, if, you, if your career keeps you from getting involved in your kid's life, if you don't have time to take time to build a relationship, with your wife and children don't be an absentee father because you might be one if those things apply to your life an NBC poll discovered that by the time the average child is six years old in America he or she will have spent more time watching TV than they ever will spend time talking with their fathers for their entire lives Six years old. Six years old. They probably didn't watch TV, but three years of that. But spend more time watching that too than spend with their father their entire lives. 
sobering. A recent study that indicated the average dad spends seven minutes a day with his children and 38 seconds a day talking to them. If, if that applies to you, dads, remember at the beginning I said we have some great dads. But if that applies to you, dad, how are you spending that 38 seconds with that child in conversation? I told you to leave that alone. Get out of the way. My good, why are you so stupid? How? How? And this brings back memories for some of you that sitting in this congregation because that may be the way that your daddy talked to you. But how are you spending your time with your children? Are you being constructive? Are you being loving? And sometimes we don't even have to say a word showing our children just how much we love them simply by giving them an ear. How are we spending time with our children? What about gifts, you know? Maybe a fishing line. Maybe a baseball or a baby doll. Maybe we need to go fishing with our kids or play ball or dolls. A man that can't play dolls with his baby girl is not much of a man. Fathers are leaders. They're guides. They're friends and symbols. But they can't be anything if they're not there. It's been said that daughters date their fathers. They got to know you. They got to know you. They have to know you in order to know who to marry. How many thinks that Shanice might have been marrying her father? Jamie's back there. He turned. Look at him. He is so red right now. You look like color of flamingo. <laughs> How will our girls know who to marry, dads? All right, let's flip it. They say that sons usually marry their mother. If your son, if your son doesn't know who daddy is, it will affect who he marries down the line. And if he marries someone, if he marries someone like his mother, how will he know how to treat her if he didn't see dad treat her the way that he should? Treating her with love and affection and, and, and taking care of her and providing for her. Putting shelter over her head. Giving her security that she so much needs. You know, boys don't learn uh, what it means to be a man from a computer game. But from watching and interacting with dads, uncles, and grandfathers, all my kid does is what is play on the computer, play on that phone. Well, it's time to create something for them to do. It's time to fill the gap. It's time to give them something. To, come on, take them out and help you fix fence. Show them how. Teach them. Dad may knock me back and say, get out of the way. Let me show you how to do that. 
But he was teaching all of the time. And I have so appreciated that in life. I credit my daddy to the fact that I can use my hands and I'm not afraid to tear into anything. It may wind up at the dump, but I'm not afraid to tear into it. Because of my daddy. Girls, they learn to admire and trust males by being able to admire, trust, and love their daddy. Dad, to the world you might be one person, but to your children you just might be the world. When a boy is four years old, he says, my daddy can do anything. At five years old, that same little boy, my daddy knows a whole lot. At six years old, my dad is smarter than your dad. At eight years old, my dad doesn't know exactly everything. At ten years old, in the olden days when my dad grew up, they were sure different. When that child is 12 years old, Oh, well, naturally, Dad doesn't know anything about that. He's too much of an old-timer to remember his childhood. At 14 years old, don't pay any attention to my dad. He is so old-fashioned. When that boy is 21 years old, he says, "My, my Lord, he's hopelessly out of date. At 25 years old, that boy, Dad knows about it, but then, then he should because he's been around a long time. At 30 years old, that same child, maybe we should ask dad what he thinks. After all, he's had a whole lot of experience. At 40 years old, I'm not doing a single thing until I talk to my dad. At 50 years old, that same boy, I wonder how dad would have handled it. He was so wise. At 60 years old, that same little boy would say, I'd give anything if my dad were here right now so I could talk this over with him. Too bad I didn't appreciate how smart he was. I could have learned a lot, a whole lot from him. The second thing, we need men who are faithful with their finances. Did you know that God might be withholding a spiritual blessing from you because he first tried you with money. In Luke 16, 11, it says, And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? If you haven't been faithful with money that God has given you, why should God give you the true riches, that that spiritual power, insight from the Word of God, answered prayer, fellowship with Jesus Christ, and, and even we can throw joy in the mix. We need men who are honest about their money. Research indicates that most households tend to spend more than their income. No matter what the income level, see, credit is simply this, credit. It is what keeps you from knowing how far past you broke. And number three, we need men who are faithful to their friends. If I were to ask you today to sit down and write letters to five people that you know, that you could count on or that you could consider to be a faithful man, men, would anybody write you a letter? Are you known as a faithful man? See, we need constant friends. Proverbs 17 and 17. A friend loves loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. See, a true faithful friend loves in times of adversity as well as in times of prosperity. There's, there are many that are friends to others while, they're affluent, while they have affluent circumstances, but when there is a change in their condition and they're stripped of all their riches maybe and, and substance, then their friends forsake them and stand at a distance from them, as was the case of Job. We find in Job 19 and 14, it simply said, My family is gone and my close friends have forgotten me. It's a very rare thing to find a friend that 
that is constant. See, when the prodigal son headed for the far country with money in his pocket, he found that he had so many friends. However, he soon discovered them to be fair weather friends. They vanished when his money ran out and they couldn't be found when he was eating pig feet. A British publication once offered a prize for the best definition of a friend. And among the thousands of answers received, here are a few of, the, of those uh, replies. This person said, A friend is one who multiplies joy, divides grief, and whose honesty is indisputable. Another person said, a friend is one who understands our silence. Another one said, a volume of sympathy bound in cloth. And uh, another one replied, it's a watch that beats true for all time and never runs down. But the winning definition read, a friend is the one who comes in when the whole world has gone out. Proverbs 27 and 6 Wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from the enemy. Nathan was a courageous and faithful friend to King David. He rebuked him after his sin with Bathsheba. Count a friend faithful who does not praise everything you say or do, but who reproves you when you are wrong. We all need those kinds of friends. We need men who are faithful to the fellowship. This, this means to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches that we're to be faithful to the fellowship. Men, I believe we ought to be in the house of God on a regular basis, bringing our prayers and our tithes and our Bibles and our love and our influence Love the church. Labor in the church. I heard about a supply preacher with, from a small town in Texas. He'd come in every, every Sunday very early, preach to the church, then leave after the PM service. Well, arriving early one Sunday, he sat down at a local donut shop, opened his Bible, began to go over his sermon notes. And a man was sitting down the counter from him, and he said, You're a preacher or something? And he replied, Yes, I preach at the Baptist church here in town. He got excited and said, hey, I'm a member in that church. The church was small and the supply preacher knew all the regulars. So he said, well, I've been preaching there for about three months and I've never seen you. He looked at the preacher kind of strange and said, I said I was a member. I didn't say I was fanatical about it. We need some men who are fanatical about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need men who are faithful to the faith. We must be faithful to the word of God. And I see a generation of young people today with no convictions. The other day I was told that a man said, it's not a sin if you're not convicted. I beg to differ. Because I've read the book. There's a, such a thing as the Ten Commandments. There's things that the Word says that we shouldn't do. There's things that the Word says we ought to stay. Folks, when it's an absolute. As a matter of fact, you can flip over to Galatians chapter 5 sometime and there is a list of absolute things that is a sin. And we are born into sin. The only way out is a relationship with Jesus Christ our Lord. And yes, the Holy Spirit will convict us of different things in and throughout our life. But most of those convictions are from the fact that there are things in my I can't be a drinking man the Lord convicted me of drinking so that is a conviction yes but I can't be a murderer either because the Bible says thou shalt not kill it's an absolute in the word of God a man that would say Sin only comes from our convictions is a man that does not read the Word of God, period. You show me a man 
that attempts to hide his sin. And I'll show you a son that will attempt to do the same. As he don't know the great truths of the word of God. There'll be a people that don't stand for the faith. It's your responsibility as a dad to be faithful to the faith and to teach your family what the Word of God says. See, men who stand for the inspiration of the Scriptures and the birth of the Savior and the life of the Son of God and the resurrection of that same son, that return, that return that he has promised us uh, from, from heaven itself. See, we need men who are faithful to the finish. In 2 Timothy 4, 7, I fought the good fight. I have finished the race, and I've kept the faith. In Kathy's daddy's Bible, That passage of Scripture was outlined, commented on, colored. You you name it, it was there. And I've heard him quote it so many times. And because of his faithful stand for the Word of God, for his faith, and for his family, he's enjoying his eternal reward. It's important to start right, guys. Because Jesus is the way, He's the truth, and He's the life. But it is imperative that we finish well. The Greeks had a race in their Olympic Games that was that was unique to say the least. See, the winner was not the runner who finished first. It was the runner who finished with his torch still lit. I want to run all the way with the flame of my torch still lit for Jesus Christ, my Lord. I want all the dads, if you would, to stand. All the fathers in the house, I want you to stand. After preaching this message, it all sums up to this. How can I be faithful? How can I be faithful? Well, first of all, let's be faithful in the small things. Small things. If you're faithful in the small things, the big things will take care of themselves. Luke 16 and 10 It says, advance that for me, guys. Luke 16 and 10. Who can ever be trusted? Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Men, it's time for us to man up and be the man that God intended for us to be. Will we fail a thousand times? Yes, we'll fail. But what do we do? We get back up and we try it again. God is so good to us. And he will respond to you at your beckoning plea. I want you to bow your heads, if you would, all across the room, not just the guys that standing up. Men, be faithful in the secret things. Because what you are in secret is what you are. What you are in secret is who you are.
Be faithful when nobody's watching. Be faithful in the sacred things. Be faithful to meet with God every day. Be faithful to his word. Be faithful to your wife. Be faithful to your children. Be faithful to your family as a whole. Be that guiding light. Be that beacon in the dark. The lighthouse on the side of the sea. Be that individual. Be the rock that so many people are looking for. All heads are bowed and this is not just for those who are standing. But I want to ask the question, is there anybody in this room today that you need to get your heart right with God? And by an uplifted hand would say, that's me, preacher. I I need to get my heart right with God. It's imperative that I get my heart right with God. Anybody from left to right, front to back, come on, come on, come on. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. Is there anybody in this room that you need to get your heart right with God? I believe that there are some men that God is knocking on the door of your heart. Knocking on the door of your heart. Let me in. Let's go to the door and let him in. Anybody by an uplifted hand. Anyone, anyone, anyone. Pastor, this is Father's Day. There's a lot of guests here. No, no, no. We're not worried about who's here and who's not. We're worried about if we got our heart right with God or not. Anybody, while we wait, while we wait just a moment, come on. There's somebody in this room that you need to get your heart right. Church, pray right now. I believe, I believe it's so vitally important that we pray right now, right now, right now, that we pray. That there not be any hindrance. Come on, come on, come on, guys. Is there somebody you want to get your heart right with God? Right now. While we wait just a moment longer, and that's it. While we wait just a moment longer. While we wait just a moment longer. Come on, raise it up. Raise it up. God knocking on the door. You can do this because... Jesus said that he that we can through him. Paul's made the same thing. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Father, you're a good daddy. You love me when I was unlovable. You guide me. You direct me. You talk with me. You show me the way. You answer my questions. You forgive me when I've messed up. And you're guiding me to the other shore. And should you tarry, one day I'll cross over. I want to be found faithful. I want to be a faithful man a faithful man I ask your blessing on all these dads that are here today and I ask you to pour out your spirit in each of their lives guide them, lead them, direct them and Father I thank you for each one of them we give you praise and honor in Jesus name Amen